In today's video, we're going to learn how to make do-it-yourself tokens um, for use in your role-playing games like Dungeons and & Dragons and other games. And I think it's a really good skill to have because, especially these days, many, many more people are playing online rather than face-to-face. -face. Now, I'm going to be using the graphics program Paint.net. It's a free program and it's very easy to use. Now, you can certainly use whichever program you prefer, whichever one you have, but one thing that's important here is that it's going to show you, this video is going to show you how to use layers. And that applies whether you're using Photoshop or GIMP or other graphics programs. So you can see I have this image here. Now this is an image I drew and the background is copyright free. I got it from Pixabay. I want to stress that all the images we're using here today are copyright free. I think that's important, especially if you're doing anything where you're going to sell it. You know, for your home game that nobody else is going to see, I guess you can use whatever images you want, but if it's anything that's going to be commercial or you have a, a monetized channel on YouTube, you do want to think about copyright laws and not violating them. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new layer. And it's really easy. There's just a little button here for add a new layer, or we can go under layer, add a new layer. Now, why are we doing that? This layer, it's kind of like an overlay, like a plastic overlay on a... Um, an overhead projector for those of you who are old enough to remember that. Now, why am I doing that? I don't want to touch the original picture just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift down. So I selected, it, it's called the ellipse select. And by holding it down, that gives me a perfect circle. And I think that's a pretty good size right there. So I'm going to let the button go. And now I've got it. Now I take my move tool, my arrow, this is on the clear layer, so I can slide this around wherever I like it. See, and it doesn't affect the image below. I can just decide where I want it. And I'm kind of liking it, oh, right about here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, here's the special trick. You might want to write it down or remember it. You hit Control, Shift, X. And it crops the whole thing right down. It got rid of everything else around it. That's a totally useful token. This is the simplest way to do that. So let's see. Now what we're going to do, we want to save this. Now before you save it, we want to think about image size. This image is about 1625 by 1625. That's way too big, way too big. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it down and I'm going to go 280. Oops, let me show you something else. If I hit maintain aspect ratio, if I click that box, because it's in a square box, I can go 280 by 280 and then say OK. And there we go. And it shrinks it down. I should mention, and you can see when I zoom in here, you do lose a little bit of resolution. Now, if I hit Control D, I can deselect that. But we're not going to be viewing it at this size on our virtual tabletop. We're going to be viewing it much smaller. See how if I make it smaller, that resolution issue, that graininess doesn't really become an issue. If you plan on printing these, you can always save them bigger. You know, if you're going to print them on cardstock or paper and glue them to cardboard or something like that. Or um, I've even glued them to poker chips, you know, just with regular school glue. And then you can always, when you're done, soak them in water and the glue will come off. And you can even reuse the poker chips if you want. Now, when we save this, save as, and you can see I have a folder here. Here's what's really important. We're going to give it a name. I'll just call it Elf. But we want to save it as a ping, a .png. The reason for that is if we save it as a PNG, and I'll just save it here, okay, flatten, and it'll say flatten. You actually lose your layers when you save it. All this stuff with the boxes, you see the thing with the checkerboard pattern in the, in the background? You won't see that. That will be clear. So when you put it into something like Roll20 or another virtual tabletop, you won't see that. And that's really good. All right, so you might say, well, that, this is all well and good. But let's see one where we want to put a, um, a circle around it. You know, maybe we want to put a nice border. 
So I have another image over here. I thought just break it up. We'll do another image. So I have my drow elf here. And the process is going to be similar, but different. So I'm going to still use my circle tool. And that looks pretty good. So I drew an ellipse, I drew a circle. And let me think, I kind of, I don't think that's too bad there. If it is, if you want it a little bit bigger, you can always just stretch it here on the corners. Now, here's the trick. We're going to fill this in. So I can come over here, I can get as many colors as I want. Um, and maybe we'll do a, let's see, can we do like a burgundy? That might look nice because it might go with her, um, with the burgundy that's on her um, shoulder pads there. And we use the fill tool, the paint bucket tool. We fill it in. You say, well, that's no good. Now I can't see her. And I, you know, I, if you like, you can always slide these shaders over. Like I might go a little bit darker there. But here's what we're going to do. Let's add another layer. I'm going to go back to the ellipse circle tool. Um, so now you can see the other layers still selected. If you do control D, you can deselect it. I believe you can, you can also do that up here. Um, let's see which menu that's under. Yeah, under the, I think it's under the edit, um, edit menu, which you're, you can deselect it. Control D is easy. So now I'm going to draw another circle. I'm going to try and now it's going to be a little bit, I didn't draw it perfectly concentric. So I'm going to guess that that looks pretty good. And now let's move it. And you can always use the arrow keys to move it like more gently. If you don't want to use the mouse, if you want to really try and get it centered. So let me get it really as centered as best I can. And that looks pretty good for right now. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to go down to the layer below it. And that will still stay selected. I'm just going to hit the delete key. And you can see now I've got a nice ring and I've got a nice token there. But there's too much. We still have all the background. So I go over here. It's called the magic wand. And I select the magic wand. I want to make sure that I'm on the ring layer, the layer with the token ring there, and select it. Now what it selected was everything outside. So I want to invert that selection. And to invert the selection, there's a button right here under Edit, Invert Selection, or I just tend to use Control-I, you know, it's a little quicker. Oops, what did I do? I think it, Control-I, let's see if that works now. Now I did say, I apologize, Control-I, there we go. Control-Shift-X will delete everything. Now, it looks pretty good, but we'll want to resize it. So let's go Image, Resize, and I'm going to again do 280 by 280. Make sure again you've clicked the Maintain Aspect Ratio. And there we go. And we could save that. I'm not going to save it right now. I don't need it. I already have a token with, with this character. Now let's say you have a border that you'd really like to use. Maybe you don't want to make one, you know, it can be a hassle to make it every time. So let's go over to another image. Now I already have a border. And in fact, I'm going to show you the border here and I'm going to put a link below. I made the border. I used a copyright free um, texture to make the border. So I'm going to have a link in the description below where you can get this same border. You can use it for free. You have my permission, you know, whatever you want to use it for. Um, I'm not worried about that. So let me do layers, import from file. Because what that says is go out to the, my computer here and I have to find the file. And I know where it is. It's in this one, token border ping. Now you can see it brought it in on a separate layer. And I think it's a little small. Do you see how her face is? It's really, she looks a little too cramped. So just go on the corners and stretch it out however we like. 
maybe something like this. And you might like this border because it has this drop shadow behind it. I think that does a really nice job um, kind of pushing the image back a little bit. Uh, makes it look um, a little bit more three-dimensional. Now I'm going to do Control D to deselect it. Go over here, get my magic wand. Let me stress again, I'm on the border layer. So what I would do is select everything outside. Control I lets me invert the selection. Or you can do that from the edit menu. And then Control Shift X gives me the token. I think that looks pretty nice. Then just to remind you, we can, if we go to image, we could resize it. Like I said, 280 by 280. Make sure maintain aspect ratio is checked. And then we could save that and we'd be good to go. And you want to keep your file size small. That's why I did 280 by 280. If you want to go a little bigger, that's fine. Um, but keep it nice and small. It helps it upload really quickly. And just tends to work better for your virtual tabletops. For printing, you may want to use a larger size, you know, if you definitely are going to be printing these um, to maintain resolution. Now let me show you one more thing before we go. What if you want to make a square token? So I have my gnome thief or gnome prospector here. And let's make a really nice snazzy token. So let's put a new layer on. Now we're going to use the rectangular selection. I probably want this to be a square. So to get it to be a square, as I stretch it out, I hold down the shift key. I let go of the mouse button. I've got a square. Now, because I'm on that separate layer, remember, I can move this around until I'm happy with it. And that's pretty good for right now. So let's go back to the magic wand and select the outside. And it must have... Um, now, it's not taking that. Oh, I, that's right. I don't need to do that selection. I apologize. So now that I have it selected, I'm just going to do Control Shift X, and I got it. Now I want to show you something else that I've been doing. What I've been doing is putting the nameplates right on the token, and I'll tell you why. That way I don't have to remember an NPC's name. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and let's do the rectangular selection. I'm going to select a little area on the bottom where my name's going to go. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to fill it with a dark gray. I could use a black too. You'll, you'll see why in a minute. So I need the paint bucket tool. Now, it's really important. I put this on layer two, not on the background. Now, you may not like that it got cut off. See, it kind of cut off the image. We're going to fix that in a minute. I just hit deselect. Now, here's how I'm going to fix, it, fix that. I'm going to go up to layers layer properties. Leave it on normal, but take the opacity and let's slide it down. Oh, and I like that. Maybe 150 is right around there is good. There's, there's no exact science for this. But the reason is now I've got to can see the image below, but it's still kind of standing out. I'll just click OK. Now let's do another layer. So we'll add a new layer. Oh, and I'll just do this one in black. You can certainly do it whatever color you want. So let me get my text tool, which is the T over here. I'm going to do centered. I'll just leave it as Calibri for right now, but let's make it a little bit bigger. And I'm guessing I'm going to go 24. Maybe make it bold. Like I said, I'm just guessing. I can always correct that. And this character's name is Poor Jack. Oh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Try 36, uh, even bigger still, 48. Now, I don't think that black is standing out, so let's try white. You know, and this is just stuff you have to play around with. Eh, a little bit better. That might be a little too white there, a little too stark. Let's see if I add a little yellow into it. And that's fine. And you can play around with this and make it exactly the way you'd like it. Again, at the end, don't forget, we would probably take this image and size it down, resize. Like, this is over 1,500. That's way too big. 
I'd probably use 280 or 300, make it much smaller. Yeah, actually, that doesn't look too bad. And then when we're using poor Jack, I'll know exactly what his name is. The um, players will know what the NPC's name is, and you're good to go. So that's way, four different ways to make tokens, just using paint.net, and I think they look pretty good. So I hope this was useful. If it was, like and subscribe. And if you know anybody else who'd be interested in this kind of content, uh, please let them know. That'd be great. If you want to support the channel or see what we're doing, there's links in the description below to all the products from Sharp Mountain Games. And I just want to thank you for watching. I appreciate every viewer, and we'll see you in the next video.